Uh, I think if we're looking at uh, Cat, th uh, Cat 5, Cat 5E, Cat 6, um, you're talking about 100 meters is the longest length of the cable that you want to pull from your distribution point out to the station. And that includes patch cords too. Patch cords and line cords. So 100 meters or 328 feet. Now what's going to happen if it's longer, um, the computer still may work on the other end or whatever that device is, but our meters won't pass that cable. Because it's outside the standards. Because it's outside the standards. And our cable certification equipment will not certify it. Right. And then you run into other problems too because you're, you have computers, uh, NIC cards, network interface cards, and routers that are waiting a certain time period to get a response. And the longer you get further out, the longer it takes for that response. And they may actually start to resend a packet that, that should have been responded to as, you know, because they waited the time limit. Yeah, Ethernet's pretty resilient. So, <coughs> in practicality, if you went 101 meters, 102 meters, you probably wouldn't notice a difference. But that is what's listed as the maximum supportable distance. And you're better off to stay within it. Um, and in most cases, you know, most poles are under, yeah. they're going to be under 300 feet. Under 300, but average is probably around 100 to 150. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, one of the, if you're going further than 100, uh, I mean 100 meters, uh, uh, there are some solutions. One is um, uh, you design your floor plan in such a way that there's a switch that would handle other parts of the building that are further from the, so you put a intermediate distribution center there Correct. rather than a main distribution center. Also, um, if the switches themselves are more than 100 meters apart, you connect them using fiber. Um, the fiber does not have that limitation. Um, and the limit for fiber, depending on the multi-mode, single mode, mm -hmm. multi-mode, um, it's right around 600 meters or just under 2,000 feet. Uh, fiber is definitely more expensive per foot than um, twisted pair copper. Um, <clears throat> but this leads to like a larger point that is a question we get a lot on cable supply is which goes to the do I need Cat 5B or Cat 6 or Cat 6A cable. The vast, vast majority of networks use a tenth to a hundredth of their network bandwidth. So in a lot of cases people will say I want Cat 6A because that's the newest, and I can't use Cat 5E because that's so old. The you know your your Cat 5E is going to support one gigabit per second. Um, you you know you're fast. Most people don't have an internet connection above five megabits per second, so we're talking less than one percent of that that bandwidth is being used. Throw that in addition, the computer can't transmit a gigabit per second. The NIC may be or the computer itself may be incapable of preparing the data to be transmitted that quickly or the program may not be able to do that. So, um, you know, the fiber to the desktop, unless you're running supercomputers and you're at NASA or Pixar or something like that. Or you know, hospital applications or some where, where you need fiber to the particular item. I, I'm not I'm Right, not sure. to a specialized computer. We're not talking like, about a laptop like or a workstation or something like mm -hmm. that. So, in, on, in general, it's, it's fairly expensive per foot. And then it's also fairly expensive to install because it's so fragile. And it's, it's not so fragile that it's like a, you know, a thin piece of glass that's going to break if you drop it, but it's more fragile than twisted pear, which can be scraped along a, um, a, um, a metal corner or you know, go through drywall without any problems, get a kink in it, you unkink it, you're good to go. Uh, with fiber, you gotta, it takes a lot more care during the installation process. In addition to protective measures um, like a, uh, a, an orange conduit is usually what's required in the ceiling so people know when they're going through the ceiling or going through the walls that this is a fiber optic cable. Oh, well then when, where do you use it? Why don't you explain that? So the place that, that we install it the most would be as a backbone between the IDF and the MDF. So would you have one main distribution point? IDF like being? The intermediate distribution and point. And MDF? the main distribution point. So the main distribution, as you were saying earlier, 
there's a switch that's outside of the length of the 100 meters now you would put a switch out there past that well if you're going to be transmitting a lot of speed, a, a lot of communication between these two locations you want to put a fiber optic cable backbone between those copper may work but if it's further than the 100 meters then you want to put fiber in I think the things that customer needs to realize sometimes is they get caught up in the idea of fiber. All oh, this is the latest, greatest technology, and you know it's kind of new and cool and sounds great and everything else. But it, outside of its application, it's it's expensive. It doesn't uh, really meet your needs. So it, it's a backbone material. And I remember once uh, you and I uh, put in fiber optic cable to a company that had. Uh, had uh, servers and all on the first floor and some customers on the first floor but on the tenth floor they had a lot of other uh, employees and they needed to connect the two floors together and really the best way to do that is connect the equipment together using fiber optics so it, it's not it's really not that hard to terminate once you've been trained on it it's not really hard it doesn't take a lot to be trained on it it only takes a few hours uh, maybe a day or two or, or making uh, maybe five to ten mistakes as you're trying to terminate them but once you learn it, it's, it's a pretty basic, straightforward type of setup. And, and it's a, you, you learn some things. You don't run one pair. You, you run six pairs or 12 pairs in fiber optics. So you always have a backup pair in case the one pair gets damaged. Um, so you learn some basic application things that you may not have in books. But it, it really is a wonderful technology as a backbone. And the nice thing about too is no EM, no electronic interference. Correct. Um, you know, one of the things that we talked about, people going to school to learn this, um, this is one area where people have gone to school, and there's many schools that teach people in fiber optic terminations. Mm -hmm. However, in our line of business, what would you say, one in ten requires fiber, or one in, one in 50? fifty? Yeah. That, you know, if we're dealing with small to medium-sized businesses, not a lot of fiber going into those businesses. No. Um, but if, if, if it's even one in 20 <coughs> installations, that lone skill of fiber termination alone is not enough. Right. But, you know, there are some individuals uh, or some companies that use a lot of fiber. You know, you're talking about, you know, the phone company, um, you know, your, your uh, utilities, utilities all those, they, do, you, they use a lot of fiber. So they might have a specialty where they need that. Or a special fiber. department that only yeah. installs that. Sure. Yeah. But it's it's resistant to electromagnetic interference. Um, you know, you can have all the, the stuff going on at the same time. You could shoot electric through it, and it's not going to affect the signal because it's a light signal. Um, it's also hard to tap into. So some companies need that security. Uh, you can't, you know, you can tap into anything, but it's extremely hard on fiber optics without interfering it with it. Um, and it's resistant to weather. Uh, you can put it in uh, wet water, uh, you know, in a, in a conduit underground that's packed full of water for years and it won't affect the fiber optic at all because it's glass. It's nothing and to it's, corrode. It's nothing to corrode, nothing to interfere with it. There's no electricity going through it, it's light. And I guess the one warning though is if you're doing fiber optics, you don't want to look into the end of the fiber, sure, of course, yeah. because there's a laser at the other end or an LED that's very powerful and it can cause eye damage. So there is a safety issue with fiber optics, but it's a great medium to work with. But as you all said, it's, you know, when do we use it? One, one in 50 installs. And it's always for a backbone in our applications. True. Uh, or it'll go greater distances. It'll go much further than copper will go, but the greater the transmission, the shorter the distance on copper and on fiber. And of course, you know, different applications, not uh, applications, but I guess uh, different, you have multi-mold and, and single mode. Single mode. And so, you know, you gotta, and one is more expensive than the other, one goes further than the other. So you have to know your application and you have to know that what is the equipment at the end uh, gonna terminate with and what is your purpose. I'll start with what is twisted pair. Um, the copper in a four pair Cat5, five, Cat5e, five Cat6, there are four twisted pairs. 
the manufacturers twist two um, two wires around loosely twisted around each other and there's four of those within the cable all of them copper so um, you can have UDP um, unshielded unshielded twisted pair or STP shielded, shielded twisted, twisted pair, pair. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess if you ever got to the application where you needed shielded twisted pair um, coax can can be used as well yeah well the coax the the, uh, the exterior you have two conductors and you have the exterior um, on the coax cable and that has different types of shielding you know a quad shield it's called different types of shielding on it and then you have a single center conductor right in the one center. copper one copper thing going through but it, it, it it's not compatible with uh, standard uh, ethernet Correct. installation so Correct. you use it for a radio tra uh, transmission to an antenna uh, you would use coax um, DS3s, do they use coax? DS3s, DS3s use, use coax. I thought DS3s use fiber optics. There's a couple ways you can do it, but uh, coax is one of them. Um, you and, know, it used uh, to be old ARCnet. CATV. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, which we TV never. Cable you know, applications. We don't close use circuit, the net. Closed circuit televisions, yeah. Um, but a lot of the closed circuit TV that's using uh, coax these days is actually changing to IP. Yes. Internet protocol, so they're actually going to Ethernet cables. Two, four twisted pairs, pairs. Yeah. and and most of them power over Ethernet (PoE) yes. uh, to run these closed circuit TVs. But uh, coax has uh, great bandwidth capabilities um, and uh, different types of coax. Uh, not used as much as the, uh, nowhere near as much as it used to. It used to start out with all the the computers used to have the ARCnet where you'd have a backbone and all the computers would attach to that backbone and that was the best they had back then. Um, then we went to twisted pair which is 10 base T and then moved on to Cat 5E, Cat 6 and the others. Also twisted pairs again more physically resilient. You can kink up coax and that's all she wrote for it if it breaks um, and you gotta either fix it right there by putting on a barrel connector which is an ideal or run a whole new uh, line. Yeah, twisted pairs, as you're installing it, it's a little more forgiving. But this is old technology. I, I don't, I've not done an ARCnet install in 15 years. Uh, right. But that was a backbone install that had one, one run and all the computers attached to it, where with uh, modern Ethernet, uh, it's one cable per computer. And then when you use a switch rather than a hub, it doesn't have to worry about the other computers and what, what they're transmitting. Where you and have you to won't find too many NIC cards with a BNC coax connector in the back. <laughs> there are some still out there, and, you know, but I don't think you can actually buy them anymore. No. So coax is not that useful, and uh, it's really uh, the the king of the hill today is Ethernet and uh, over twisted pair. Over twisted pair, Ethernet over twisted pair is really the standard, and it's really developed to that over the last couple of years.